watchfulness, obedience to the word of God and his instruction, continuous push for Christ's life. Before he actually met this woman, the Bible recorded in, I think, verse 10, that he already slept with the prostitute. So there is a gradual process of declining in your relationship with God. It is not just one day that the enemy will capture you. Bit by bit, you will have been messing up with that grace. You will have been messing up with that people. You will have been messing up with that people. Bit by bit. Then at the end of the day, you just get knocked out. That is it. And that person wants to do couples in life. You see, when it's just like this calling, it's just like our calling, waking up in the morning and having a big ministry. You can't joke with it for a second. All these uh, outside church, you go, oh, I, you just play. I will lay hands on you and you do that. You know, you are just, it's like you toiling with the anointing. It's like you, and it's nothing to joke about. All these things, something did. It was joke that, oh, I would like to eat today, I would like to eat tomorrow, I would like to eat today, I would like to Not me, bit by bit, they got it. That's it. And that was the end of the ministry. How to connect to divine favor? Number one, abstinence from sin. Two, create a strong relationship with the Almighty God through Jesus Christ and not small gods. Sometimes that small god could be we've been too busy chasing money, we've been too busy chasing career and forgetting about the call. You know, meanwhile, at the end of the day, the body we are so much thinking about is nowhere to be found. We don't take time to take care of the soul that goes up with us. There was a story I had about a man with four wives. It was just a parable. And none of the wife was ready to go uh, to the grave with, with him. You know? But the first wife decided, okay, I'm going to go with you. But the analysis was that the first wife is your soul that is going to heaven with you. you know? So create a strong relationship with your almighty God through Jesus Christ and not small gods. There are a lot of small gods that we worship. You know, indirectly. Number three, I want you to know that those who beg God don't beg men. And what I mean by that is cast all your burden on God. When you cast all your burden on God, He is the one that is going to direct the heart of that man that you are looking for a favor from. When you believe God for everything, when you know, and when I say cast all your burden on God, uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't respect men too. Because at the end of the day, it's going to come through men to bless you. you know? Making and fulfilling covenant, very important. Promises and vows with God. You see, it is better not to even make vows. Because most times, we usually don't know what lies in the future. You probably say, oh, I want to give God $10,000. And in two weeks, you the miscellaneous happens, and you can't do it. And you, know, these things begin to uh, affect you day by day until the day you even forget it. And there is, you know, there is punishment for all these things. It's even easy, it, it's okay to make a vow with God and not fulfill it. He's a merciful God. They can let it slide. But I beg you, don't try it with me. When people ask you for money, especially from Nigeria, don't assure them you are going to send money to them. All these things can groom a lot of hatred from people. And before you know it, the person they talk to will go and consult someone. Listen, in this life, I, you know, someone like me, I believe, I believe so, I'm more of a spiritual person. And all these attacks, they are in my head. Because something, before Delilah actually destroyed Samson, it, some people came to her to say, we'll give you 1,000 silver if you can do this. They gave her money to destroy him. That is how some people outside somewhere have collected the, your money to destroy some. You know, I'm, sincerely, this is not this is not the, no, don't bring the spirit of fear into people. God, Jesus has not asked us to, to preach fear and all that. Fear that the Bible is talking about is the spirit of fear. So that is spiritual. You need deliverance. Fear actually, in its original sense, is part of the mechanics of human being. Fear is what you need to know that you need to run away from life. So there is a part of us that needs fear. That there is a part where fear is useful. But it is the spirit of fear that the Bible was talking about. 
you know. So for real, there are people that take contact of our life some way that get paid for it. That is in the Bible. Another way to connect to divine favor is obedience to the words and instructions of God. Advantages of divine favor. The proceed from divine favor is eternal. The proceed from divine favor is eternal. It is the perfect gift for the perfect time. The story of divine favor is always divine. And it's divine to others. What am I saying here? When God helps you, see, it is a when you go to school, when Pastor B went to school, he would read over the night. He won't sleep. Then he went for the exam and passed. That is not a divine favor. That is a proceed from natural law. It is normal that when you, from hard work, it is normal that when you plant corn during the rainy season, it will grow. That See, leave witchcraft on the side. When you do the right thing, you will get the right result. Now, divine favor is the little things that we actually don't put our minds in, that we don't think it, it, that's the right thing. Sleeping and waking up, that's the right thing because you have no control over it. That's true. Driving to work and come back is divine people. You have no control over it. So there is a supernatural hand that is actually taking care of that. That is what we call divine people. You were pregnant for nine months. A baby is living inside you. Now, that is a biological thing, which is still a natural one. But you went to the hospital, and the doctor made a mistake. Yet you came back alive. You are alive, you really is alive. That is a divine thing. Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4, 16. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of grace with boldness, with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. You see, there is something about divine favor. If it is not spoken about, you have defeated the purpose. Why do you think the Bible recorded all the miracles that God did and put it in all languages? You think it's just for one person to read it? No. It's for hundreds of people to read it. Hundreds. So when God has done something for you, which is beyond the natural, please, please, share it. The story of Job today, even after all he went through, after all he went through, divine people came, after all he went through, is what we are reading today that is giving some Christians hope. Is what some people hold on to to stay alive, and God has done that same thing for you, and you just go in the corner of your way and you say, God, I thank you. That you have defeated the purpose of that divine favor. Another purpose of divine favor is for the gospel to spread. Jesus kept on doing miracles, and people kept on spreading the news. Disadvantage of divine of uh, staying ordinary. Disadvantage of staying ordinary. It requires all your effort with little success. It makes success so stressful. The body is greater than the joy. It puts our destiny in the hands of humans, and we all know what humans can do. Natural circumstances can stop our dreams. We become too susceptible to our environment. We may be pray for others to be used and done. Negative supernatural forces can even make us unstable. Death is a penalty because you do not have any keeper. When you are staying ordinary, death is the penalty. And guess what? The penalty taker, the penalty player is your mercy. And mercy does not miss. <laughs> that is the kingdom of darkness. They are mercy. They don't miss. And you, you don't get mercy and openness without the keeper. Now, that is where divine people come to. God becomes the keeper. He helps you defend every attack, every harm coming on your way. Divine favor destroys natural laws. 
The Bible said that Moses brought the law. Jesus, the law is going to punish you for whatever you have done. The law is going to judge you and put you in prison. Because you are a sinner, the Lord will, the, the Lord will put you in prison. And you become a prisoner for life. In fact, I've seen people that they give life imprisonment. Some people were given, I think they call it three to life. So that when you, in case you die and you wake up, you go back to prison. <laughs> but the divine temple, that is the Jesus we are talking about, his own kingdom is for the sinners. It is not to put sinners in prison. He has actually come to deliver sinners and set them free and let them go. Instead of the law putting you in prison, Daddy has come to let you go. And he will tell you not to do it again. Huh? Just let this man go and become a better person. Praise the Lord. The vanity ball is when you didn't die during church breath. You see, the salvation we are enjoying today, the privilege we are enjoying today, is a divine people because it is beyond the natural. Why? Nobody had to have anything to do with Mary before she became pregnant. And that is divine. That is 100% divine. Divine favor isn't when others had to go through the normal natural biological process. Why do others start during a famine to set their life on a hold? Some people are enjoying it. Just they are, they are, they are enjoying now. And we still have to send home. You know? Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 2 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. So divine favor is. Christianity is all about divine favor. There is nothing you can do about that. It is all about divine favor. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 12. But it said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So the time we are weak, we have a gift that is going to make us strong. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. A quick reminder. Divine favor in material things should be an extra... Christ life journey. It is not the major thing. So, the major thing we need to know about divine favor is to become a better person in life. You know, to support the favor that reflects God in us. Now, that's divine favor. Praise the living Jesus. This is the prayer we pray. I think my time is up. Uh, I have 10 more minutes. Oh, very good. I just want us, this is, a, this is supposed to be more of a Bible. I just want us to communicate. So, Rachin, you get it first. <laughs> I just want us to give us a quick three minute talk on your experience on the Bible. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm first I'm just saying that um, we are all products of grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, there are things that might, that will happen in this life we will uh, not really uh, try to understand what actually happened, but maybe after months or years. You then reflect, maybe something happened in the day, and then you start reflecting on what happened in the past. And you'll be like, um, I could not do this then. How was I able to scale through this problem or achieve this? And the only answer to that for me is that grace. You know, because uh, the grace of God is always sufficient for us. So we have to make sure we are under that umbrella of God. We have to make sure we are under that protection of that um, coverage of grace. So um, grace of God, of course, it's something that we don't merit. We don't deserve it. 
but because he has God has sent his son to die for our sins. God has sent his son to pay that price. So whenever even though we are not unmerited of that grace, but being the fact that Jesus Christ came and died for us for our sins, that's an automatic price that puts us back into that protection. But we have to do one thing, only one thing, and that is be Christian and always asking for that forgiveness. Yes, sometimes we, as men, that, that we are, we might get carried away with what is going on in the world, or you not. Know, see, then we try to put some things to remove our mind from what we're actually supposed to be doing, which is the serving God, following His words, and doing His will. But when the devil comes and takes us away from those things, his major target is for us not to be protected under that grace. Because the Bible never understand that the devil is also always an accuser of men. He will always try to accuse and say, God, see, he was supposed to be here. He was supposed to be under your covering. But look at what he's doing. Now, he's accusing so that God would remove or take away his eyes from that, um, put us away from that coverage, which we're supposed to be. But the only thing that still saves us is when God looks at it and remembers that his only son, that how would you like or let your only son or daughter to come to this world and die like for nothing, you know? But when he remembers that great price he made, it's like, I've paid it all. Yeah. Just, just come back to me. I'm always open. My hands are, my, my hands are always open for you. So, and that is all we need. Once we remember and trace our first step back, just like the prodigal son, he's ever ready to bring us back and put us under that protection of grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like our post to, to help me uh, with some points differentiate between the natural and the divine field. Praise the Lord. I, I think you have explained the major differences. Uh, there are natural laws. And natural laws, uh, when you follow them, you get natural results. Expected natural results. Now, when natural laws is that is supposed to produce a natural result, is not producing the natural results. You need divine faith. Otherwise known as divine mercy. You need the intervention of God. You need the hand of God in the affairs of men. When someone reads, it is natural for him to understand what he's reading. That is the way the brain was supposed, was crafted, wired to work. I read, I T eat, I S eat, I N T. It should be there that when you ask me a few minutes later, I should remember. Now, if I now begin to read and I don't remember and I can't remember, and I even put two legs inside cold water, it's not sticking. There is something. There's a problem. I need divine favor to intervene. Otherwise known as divine intervention. And that is where there are two extremes. There are those who will not do anything when they are supposed to forbid natural laws and they expect God to intervene in those things and God will not do it. May your God say, look, garbage in, garbage out. You can help yourself here. And that's what people say, everyone help those who help themselves. In that regard, it works. It is true. But in the aspect where you keep trying and nothing is working, everyone help those who can't help themselves. So God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will give credit to Mama Ross. So Mama Ross, uh, how do we connect to, to divine favor? 
without the loss of enthusiasm. Yeah. Without the loss of enthusiasm, like so, because there are times in life where you just keep trying and you're not really seeing results. And you're praying, you're fasting, you're doing everything. How do you not lose hope when you are connecting with black people? Uh, to deliver your train and you have to go to the point of you are trying to help God tell you to do it. You know, as you are someone that wants you to speak, but God will take you before your time. There are, there are certain cases like that. And so, for somebody who is seeking the face of the Lord, you keep the word of God uh, before you. He said there are clouds of weaknesses. There are things that when we look at the word of God, we will think this. Something related to it, like the example of the case of Job. What I was, it wasn't because of sin. Everything that you had went to me. And you were in that condition where you're like, oh, I'm stupid. Everything I have been strong. And I have searched in myself. I have obeyed the word of God. Job did not cause God to be He did not. He was like, okay, if you give me everything, I still call and acknowledge you. So, if you keep the word of God, there are so many things you check the word of God and you apply it. In the case of God, you kept worshiping the Lord. And God stepped in. Because we will not give his children to share. So, in that case, we we'll keep the word of God in view and keep talking to our Father. And God says, Yes, they do not. He's not dead. He's not shot behind. He's moved from our, even our pain, our tears. He knows everything. So we hold on to God and definitely his covenant, his word and his prophecy upon our life is, is not rich. It's not that it's impossible for him. There is nothing to have for God. He will definitely, definitely to it. So keep the hope of life and God will do it. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Let us bow our hands for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this study. We appreciate you for everything we've learned. We pray that you will continue with us, that you give us strength, Lord, to even stay with you in difficult times, in the dark period, that you give us strength, Lord, to stick with you, to stick to your plan. Father, we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Praise God. Thank God for the great teaching on divine favor. And I pray that every one of us would experience and enjoy exceptional blessings in the name of Jesus. The favor of God will go before us, will be behind us, all around us, in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet and begin to worship God and appreciate Him for His mercies and his grace upon our lives. Last week, we talked about the grace of God. Today, we talked about divine favor, divine intervention, the supernatural hand in our lives that takes us beyond our strength, beyond our limitations. Let's appreciate God. Let's give him praise this morning. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Let us worship the Jesus. Let us be your name forever. In the name of Jesus. God is good all the time. He put us all the praise in His heart. Oh, 
Reflect on the favor that you have enjoyed in God. Father, you bless and you work out this morning. It's divine favor. It's not your turn. God is good. God is good. That is worthy of our praise. God is good. Yeah. 
Thank you. 
what you are doing. Because you do and you don't get the results what others are getting. He said, so that when God delivers you out of the hand of those enemies, then to serve me, to serve me without fear, to live the life of holiness, to live the life of righteousness, becomes easy. Becomes easy. You do little and you get results. You plant two seeds of corn and you have this plenty. That is what happens when you are removed from that environment. That environment of fear, that environment of spiritual harassment, that environment of spiritual intimidation, that environment of spiritual limitation. Say, God, this morning, deliver me from the hand of my enemies. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. He has only been for speed. Yes. Come upon all our enemies. 
and our fund ministers will be coming to the venue if we want to ensure safety. Praise the Lord. So let's just get prepared. And I know the singer is already getting prepared. The Lord is going to transform our life through this program in the mighty name of Jesus. All the celebrants in the month of August, the Lord will continue to honor you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So, you know what we are trying to do. Praise the Lord. We have um, a great day for the 4th of August. So, we have a great day.